Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 007. This week, we begin to pour the final wall in the basement salvage project. I try to hustle two containers. We push on with the Asheville gym, but I'm beginning to have second thoughts, and we get two train deliveries, each with 1,500 tons of material. containers, trannies. I have two phones. I think he's being a bit ambitious. Now that is what this machine was built for. The zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and I am fuming. <laughs> Look at that. Yes, five. That's what I said. Where's my 40 foot container, you chief? Isn't that satisfying? That is what I'm talking about. It's never easy. It's brutal. Boom, looking good. <laughs> Remember, this is not Buckingham Palace. It's Monday morning and this week we start next to a stream. I'm round the back of that car YouTuber guy's house, having a look at the area to see the sort of foundations we need to put behind this new fence. You were hoping I was gonna fall. The ground is slightly lower here. So what we have to do is dig foundations along this area. I wouldn't want any problems in the future. So we gotta do this like all things 100% right. So we're gonna to have to dig foundations which are 600 by 600. We're gonna to have to pour concrete here. Then we're gonna use blocks and we're gonna build up concrete blocks with reinforcement bar. And we're gonna pour concrete in those. And then we're gonna put the fence on top of that. This ensures that we'll have no subsidence in the future. And then we'll be able to build up this area with earth to have a level garden. Before we do all that, we had to clear all the greenery from the back and there is a lot of it, what we've got to get rid of. Now we've been waiting for the structural engineers plans and we have now got them. However, we begin to open up the floor to do the work and then we have another surprise. In this area, the engineer has designed a pillar to be here. Now it was a good design because the engineer wanted the pillar to sit on top of the existing foundations. However, the foundations actually sit on this side of the wall. The pillar sits on this side. So we need the engineer to come back and have a look and see if he can put the pillar on this side. Having a look at the structural plans, we have a pile to go here. Now I've been having a chat with a couple of pilers and they say they need 2.4 height to get the piling rig to work here. So let's see if we have enough space. Yes, we have 2.8 and the pilers need 2.4. We're good for piling. What you can see here is us closing up an opening where there used to be a door. So that is now completely sealed off. And now inside the room, just finishing off the steel and building up this wall and this room is taking shape nicely. There's gonna be a site meeting here later, which I am not gonna be at because I can't be in two places at once, but Jan, Steph and the architect are gonna come here. Now we've marked out the stud walls. So if you have a look on the floor here, you can see where the walls exactly are gonna be. Before we start building any of them, we wanna get approval because we wanna just make sure they're comfortable with the size of the rooms first. Again, in this room, we need approval for these wall locations. So. Here's an ensuite and there's an ensuite. That is an ensuite for that bedroom and this is an ensuite for that bedroom. So once we have approval, we'll start building them up. That's it for here. I'm gonna to head to the basement fit out project. Let's get down into the basement, see how we're getting on. As you can see, a lot has changed since our last visit. Previously, when you saw this area, we had scaffolding above and I used to come in through this entrance and stand here. Stop for a quick site visit to see how the boys are getting on and give you a talk. But all of that is now gone. You could see all the membrane in place previously, but this has all been covered over by this new level. We are now just in the basement working and we have a new entrance. Previously, the entrance was here, what you saw me climbing down, but now we have a new one over there. So let's get some access to the basement and get inside. Do, 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 since the start of the second lockdown, we've had to pull a couple of people on this job to ensure there's enough space that everybody could work safely. So progress isn't flying as it was, but we're still getting a lot done. What you can see in this room is that some of the walls are plastered. First fix is completed everywhere. Only these walls are plastered because the other ones weren't ready at the time, but we plastered what we could so we can crack on. Now we're working in other areas, preparing those as well, and those are gonna get plastered ASAP. The doors are on. The first fix is completed in the bathrooms. We've got ply on all the walls. We have the jackboard here, which is gonna go on the walls as well. So this is also progressing very well. This is the area leading to the pool. As you can see, this is also plastered. And we've done our lovely ceiling detail here. We just need to plaster the last bit of it. But we've built the construction and we've plastered the underside of it. I believe we have LEDs fitted around this. Yes, we do. I can see a cable. We have LEDs fitted here. So we're gonna finish this area in the middle as well. 
I am now in the swimming pool area. What you can see are the steels in place held up by pillars and we're gonna have treated timber joists running in between the steels and then the floor level will be at this level that you can see here. From here you can get a better look at the finished floor level. So the treated timber joists will run from these steels to the wall and the floor will sit at this level. Finally in this area you can see the jackboard is on the wall here but we need to finish it and cover the ply in this area also. That's it for the basement fit out project. Happy with the progress, gonna head back to the yard. Guys, it's 6.30 p.m. I am still in the yard because we have had a delivery of a 20 foot container. K Kent have arrived. The man here is ready. We're gonna start offloading. Now I'm not gonna put this container in its final position, which is all the way back against the weigh bridge. I'm gonna leave it forward a little bit because we need to do a bit of work to the back of it and I won't be able to get to it if it's too close to the weigh bridge. So when the 40 foot container comes, I'm gonna use that crane to move this one back in place and I'm gonna put the 40 foot on top, giving us some shelter here. Now guys, my container is looking a little bit tired. Looks like it needs a bit of TLC. Coming down now, yeah? Having a look at it, we just want to move the back corner over a little bit so we can get to it and make sure we can sand it down and put a lick of paint on it. Hey, Sonny, you're nice and steady, mate. You never know, you might do this for a living one day. <laughs> Boom, we are in place. Let's have a look in the container and see if they've left me any surprises. Ah. Ah. This ain't going very well. Oh, there we go. I've got to let you lot know something. I see containers. Oh wow, this is not the best container that I've ever seen. It's very dark out here, so we're gonna have to have a proper look in the daylight tomorrow. Will has to go home now because it's 6.45, but I will stay in here messing around with my new container. Whetstone scaffolding have turned up. The boys are here. Uh, we're talking about the different ways that we're gonna start building this gym. I had a few ideas, but I am not a scaffolder and I don't know how it's meant to be done. These boys are professionals. They know exactly how they wanna do it and they're throwing all these names around like Dolly Towers and trannies and stuff like that and i do not know what these things are so the boys are explaining it to me uh this is matthew the love island contestant you met his brother stephen the other day we always look after Asheville. boy i'm not quite sure about that um the boys are going to explain a little bit about what they're going to do here uh, we've agreed on running uh, standards all the way around yep inside and out yep to make it obviously more space for to commute through. And while we're building a gym, we need to be mindful that this is still a yard and people are working here. We need to keep it safe. I still need walkways. As you can see, my little 1.75 ton digger actually has to go here to park in the container. I need space for that. Matt said he's training for Love Island in this gym. There'll be a video of me and Daniel doing a pull-up challenge and you cannot run this time. I think he's being a bit ambitious thinking he can beat me to pull up. Oh, Terry's here. I didn't want to interrupt your filming. <laughs> I didn't want to steal the limelight from this guy. <laughs> Okay. So you're coming out two foot. We're going to come out two foot. Okay. And two foot on uh, my tape measure or two foot on your tape measure? Two foot we'll, in scaffolding we'll give you a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two foot in scaffolding terms, which basically is whatever they want to do. The boys are pulling me up on this and they're saying, how comes it's 20? Do you know what it is? I'm old school. I grew up playing championship manager on a PC and everything was out of 20. So mine isn't out of 100. You see when it says work rate 20, that's 20 out of 20. We made good progress today. I've got a sample of my rubber flooring. Very durable. Not that I drop weights, but fellas like Matt, when they deadlift, they drop the weight at the top. I am not going to lie. I didn't know it was going to be this big. This is a monstrous structure. When I thought about this, I was just thinking of having a roof over the top of it. When you start to actually talk to scaffolders and what you actually have to do to support something which is freestanding, it's actually a lot bigger than I thought. And I feel like the inside's got a lot smaller, but you know, I've started now, so there's, there's no way of getting out of it. So we just have to crack on and get it finished. While I'm trying to go around the yard, I've realized that we have had a delivery of hand wash in the men's toilets. Now I am not saying that the boys are not washing their hands in here, but all I'm saying is that I went to wash my hands and there was no soap. Now hands that do dishes can feel soft as your face with mild green. I just want to have a look at the progress, uh, what we've made on the container today. We do have a train coming in tomorrow at 11 a.m. But I have to be on site first thing in the morning at the basement salvage project. So one of the 20 footers is starting to look black. So we have finished it on one side. So you can see the difference here between the two. Doesn't look much better in black. We haven't actually done anything with this one yet. We've managed to open the doors, which wasn't easy. I am serious. I have two phones, so let's light up the dance for you. I'm not entirely sure why this filing cabinet is still here when I asked for it to be removed, but it is definitely 
not staying. We've decided to keep this shelving because it's quite sturdy. We do have some welding to do. There's a few bits and pieces around here where we can see daylight. We're gonna fill those areas, but other than that, it's not pretty, but it works well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Gonna try to get in nice and early. Uh, once I'm in, I need to give the boys some instructions in the yard to get ready for the train. Move the lorries around, move some material around, fire up the LH60, make sure she is working well. And when the train comes in, we have 1,500 tons of material. We have to offload it as quickly as possible. We have four hours. And once we've got that offloaded and the train's gone, we need to start loading lorries for the next morning. So it's gonna be jam packed. So Matt, what are you turning up tomorrow, yeah? We'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, what time are you gonna be here? Matt is gonna be here at quarter to five tomorrow morning in this here spot, yeah. With Daniel, <laughs> and so are you. Bro, I'll be here. Okay. So quarter to five, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Bro, bro, if you feel, cool, no problem. It's 9 p.m. I've just pulled into the petrol station. I am exhausted. I need to get home and try and get some sleep because I've got to be up in a few hours. But I cannot go home and park up with no diesel for two reasons. One, because I'm not going to have any time tomorrow to get fuel and I can't be messing around in the morning. Two, because the zombie apocalypse could happen in the middle of the night and I cannot not have diesel in my car. I need to be able to maneuver and get to some sort of airport because yes, I can fly planes. Yes, I am being serious. Wednesday morning in the yard, it is 10 to 6. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look for Matt because he said he would be here before me today. So let's have a look. No, no, maybe he's in the scaffold area. No. Matt is not here. We have a little problem at the moment in that last night I was meant to get online and have a look at the showcase which we're hoping to bring to you. It did not load last night and I've come in this morning and I need to make some notes and write down graphics what we're going to put on the video. Problem is I don't know how to work the computer or any of that software so I'm a bit stuck at the moment. I'm messaging Tim, Will and Ara and I don't think anyone's awake yet but the video must come out today so it's going to be a very long day. I've left the yard, I am on the way to the basement salvage project and I cannot lie, I am not happy. There's too many things which have gone wrong today already. Uh, some they're things that just happen, some are just errors which have been made and I am behind and it is a day when we cannot afford to be behind. Uh, we've just turned the LH60 on to warm it up and ensure everything's working well for the train to come and the dipping arm is not moving. We cannot move the dipping arm. So we've called Liebherr and Liebherr have dropped everything they're doing, credit to them, and they're coming straight to us now. This could be something as small as a sensor but we can't do anything about it. Just over two hours before the train lands in the yard. I have two hours to get to the basement salvage project and then get back to the yard. Now the pipes have been set up at the basement salvage project. I had a call and the concrete lorry should be there any minute. There is a lot going on. Plus there's meant to be a video going out this evening, which is um, the London Muse Home Showcase. It didn't download, so I couldn't watch it last night at home. And I've come in this morning to try to watch it, uh, to write notes and graphics of what needs to be on it, etc. And I tried to sit down and do that. And I couldn't even do that because every time I sat down, something happened, someone came in. There was a question, what was this? What was that? This isn't working, that isn't working. And I am fuming. To be honest, I am not happy. But at the same time as I'm not happy, um, I have to remember that there's a lot of people that haven't done anything wrong. So if somebody calls me and they have nothing to do with what's actually happened, I have to be I have to learn to control myself. I have to not snap. It's one of them things, everything's going wrong and there's a lot and it's all boxing me in on every side. I still do not have a 40 foot container. So let's give Max of K.E. Kent a call. How are we doing? As we personally know each other, I've called you on your personal mobile number. Am I on camera? No, why would you be on camera? You, what, do I run a YouTube channel or something? Of course you're not on camera. What are we saying for a 40 footer? Is that 40 foot container made out of gold? How much is the one you found? 200 quid or something like that. Where is it? You're gonna overreact. Newcastle. Liverpool. Give you a price to do it, you're gonna overreact. A price? A who? A price, mate. Where you, can, where you start? It's always about money with you, isn't it? It's always about money. I'll make a couple of phone calls, see what I can find local. Good. I'll come back to you today. Excellent. It's been a fantastic right. phone call and I've enjoyed you immensely. This is all the formwork that you could see in the basement before. What you can see here is this whole wall is ready. So we've been taking a lot of it out because we don't need it. So when I get down to the basement, all that's left in there should be the parts that we were still using for the final pour. But as you can see, there was a lot of kit we had down there. So it takes a while to carry it all out. For the first time, you can see some of these walls with no formwork at all on it. And we have finished the top area as well. So you can see we are completely watertight here and we are structurally sound. If you look now, the staircase has been removed and we are pouring the final wall. So we're pouring the lower part and we're gonna pour the top part in a few days. The concrete lorry's pulled 
the way, but he's had to turn around and come back because when we measured it up, it was about 1.3 meters. However, once the lorry had mixed 1.3 meters and he put it into the pump, we thought to ourselves, most of the concrete would still be in the line, but now we've completely cleared the line out and we are still short by about 300 mil. Yeah, there it is. We have concrete. Oh, it's filling, it's filling, it's filling. So the port is now finished. We need to head back to the yard because the train is imminent. So if, if you've got me, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's one of those great moments I like. We're at the lights next to an Asheville lorry. Let's see how he is. Let's do a bit of filming. The train is here and we are offloading. The LH60 is flat out. It's working perfectly well. As you can see, the elevating cab means you can see directly into the carriages. Now we can fit 24 carriages, but at the moment we only have 20. We've used the secondary line and we've made sure that the locomotive here is completely in the Asheville yard. It is not out on the network rail land. See, completely in the Asheville yard. Actually taking a look at it, it looks like they've sent us brand new carriages. I would definitely prefer a black Asheville locomotive. Shout out to GB Rail Freight. That's the second time I'm saying it now. Don't forget your boy, Daniel. Now the material you can see here is not what we normally get. What's a type one? This is a special 6C material. This is going to a special project. What you can see the operator doing isn't easy. You have to scoop out as much as you can. So you go this way, this way, this way, this way. And then you go back that way. Then you need to drop the bucket in and use the bucket to clean the bottom of the carriage. Once you clean the bottom of the carriage, you need to try and take it all out of the corners. At the same time while you're doing that, you need to make sure that you do not derail the carriages. Because if you have a look, every time we go into the carriage, it shakes it. Seeing as we're in the railway yard, we're over here anyway, thought we'd come and have a look at the containers. It's not exactly exciting, it's trains, but we'll have a look. That shouldn't be in here unless there's some sort of secret documents here. Remember, this is not Buckingham Palace. This is a container. The time is 3.28 and we have offloaded the train actually early ahead of schedule because we've got till four o'clock. But as you can see, the last carriage is getting offloaded now. It's been a great successful unload. And for anyone who's about to say it, I am not on the rail line. I'm not near the machine. I am not near the train. I don't have a hard hat on, but I'm standing out in the open. I know that you lot like to jump on me for all health and safety issues, which I am taking note of and I am correcting, which is going to bring me to my next point. We have this trolley system, which will have three fire extinguishers and first aid kits on it. So we'll have these by each of the diesel tanks and we're going to put one of these on each site as well. It was a suggestion that was made to us by one of our viewers. Thank you very much and we are following through with it. We have started on the second container. So we're giving it a jet wash now so we can take off all the loose bits before we start sanding. What day is it? It's Thursday and we are in the yard. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Last night was a very frustrating night. We worked really, really hard on making sure that we bring you the Wednesday edition of Asheville videos, which is a showcase of a property which we finished a few years ago. Unfortunately, we had an issue with a drop box. So Tim and I stayed here late. Arrow was working also late but it didn't upload to the Dropbox till 10 p.m. We didn't want to put out a video at 10 p.m. on a Wednesday because we didn't feel that you'd all still be awake and have a chance to watch it. You should all be in bed on a school night. Today, we're going to go for a 5 p.m. release. LBC have just pulled into the yard. This is the company that is going to help us get rid of the annoying graffiti. This is Conan from LBC. They've come down and they are going to help us try and get rid of this graffiti. But I think they have to do a bit of trial and error. At the same time as they want to take off the graffiti, I don't think that they want to destroy my lovely banner. While we're in this area, let's give you a little update on the gym. The structure is completely up and we have the tin roof on. Whetstone Scaffold are back here on Saturday and Sunday. They're going to put tin round all the sides to about this point. And we're going to leave a gap at the top as well. So hopefully in the summer when it gets hot, the air will come here and it will escape at the top. The Asheville boys will be here as well. We're putting up the LED floodlights. We're going to put ply on this wall and we're going to put mirrors here. Not because I like to look at myself, because it's good to have good form. No point picking up big weights if you're not picking them up right. While I'm standing here gassing about my gym, work is going underway and it looks like my sign is being cleaned relatively easy, which is making me feel embarrassed because I tried everything I could and the man is cleaning it within 10 seconds. Big up to LBC. So this man's name is Gabriel. So the angel Gabriel has come to save us. As soon as he got here, I asked the question. I said, are you Gabriel or are you Gabby? 
He said, I am Gabriel. So we're going to respect his wishes because I'm not a Dan and I'm not a Danny. I'm a Daniel and I like it when people address me correctly. I'm not going to tell you how they're doing it. I'm not going to give away their trade secrets. So you'll have to call them and get them to remove your graffiti to find out. Yesterday evening, you saw the delivery we received and now it's been put together. So we have one by this diesel bay and another one over here. Guys, I want to introduce you to Wayne. Wayne is our new... Oh, my phone. What a shag, man. Where was I? Someone came in the yard. They didn't know who they were. The eight-ton digger is not working. Somebody asked someone for something, but they didn't tell them what they needed. Then they found what it was, but because they didn't tell them what they needed, it was the wrong thing what they found. This is Wayne. Wayne is new to Asheville. Wayne has been on machines for years and he is an expert in compliance and health and safety. He's having a look at the machine now, making sure the machine is going to be ready to work tomorrow. Now, when I ordered this bucket, I ordered it for a dual purpose. So I wanted to be able to take material off the train, but I also wanted to be able to load inner muck onto the train. The problem with inner muck, like clay, it's very sticky. Inside the grab, we have like these, what do you call them? Lead scraper bars. Yeah, we have scraper bars. Thank you. That's why he's here. We have scraper bars inside the grab to clean it out each time. The trouble is we're not loading muck onto trains and now these scraper bars are getting in the way of taking the material off the train. Wayne tried to untighten these to see if we could take them off, but we can't actually take them off because of how they were made. So we've had to tighten up all the bolts. The machine hasn't been that busy and so we need to wear it. And then Wayne says the machine will be a lot faster, which means instead of offloading the train in three and a half hours, he will do it in two. Won't you Wayne? Yes. <laughs> this is the material that came in yesterday. We've put it all into this bay. We have another train coming tomorrow and hopefully all of that will fit in this bay as well and we will be ready for Monday morning. Now we need to think about next week because next week we got five trains coming in. Yes, five, that's what I said. I am in the concrete block area and I've had a request from my friends at Southern Grove, Andrew Southern, who we've done an interview with. Click here to watch that interview and Tom Slingsby. Now, Southern Grove have a number of developments where they're going to have large flagpoles outside flying the Southern Grove flag. In order to have the flags flying safely, you need to have a large post. No, it's not a post, Tim. What's it called? It's called a weight on the floor. What's it called? It's not a post. It's like the thing on the ground, like a... It's a block. Should I call it a block? You need to have a large block on the ground which counters the weight of the flag swaying in the wind. So this is a sleeve. So I'm going to have to make a concrete block with this sleeve inside which they can put on the floor and slide the flag inside as i like to do all things in a big way i tried to get them to have the large 2.4 long concrete lego blocks we make but that's unfortunately going to be too big so i'm going to have to use something a lot smaller like one of these if i pour it and this is already inside when i actually pour the concrete and it dries this should be in the middle and it should work perfectly my beautiful banner has been restored to its former glory i'm very thankful Thank you to LBC. All of you can now stop writing in the comments about the graffiti on my banner. Nice one. Thank you, mate. You, man, you're a big inspiration. We're trying, mate. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We are building a London feature area in the yard. So I've got my black phone box. I'm looking for a post box. I need a bus stop. And I was thinking, what else? What else? What else? And I was like, yes, a black taxi. And I'm going to use this to show for people around the yard. I'm going to have a look myself on eBay and online. But if anybody does know and can point me in the right direction, and before you say it, not a new one. A nice old one with at least 200,000 miles on the clock because its final home and resting place will be the yard. We have two taxis. We have one at 700 and one at 790. We like it from the front, side on. Good image, good image. It's a 55. Oh, look at those seats. Premium seats. And I like the black and yellow. You know, that's my thing. 435,000 miles. I didn't know that that was actually possible. We are going to start trying to put together this flagpole base. So what you can see here is the mold going back together. So we're going to put this divider in. Max. How we doing? Not bad. What are you saying? What are you saying? What you got for me? What have I got for you? Where's my 40 foot container, you chief? Everybody always asks how we manage to pick up the concrete Lego blocks after we've done them. So we have a magnet on the inside here. And then we have one of these. And we have a rubber. This goes around. And we now push this into the magnet holder. For the techers. And now it's in place. We put mold oil inside because it means when the concrete is dry, we can break it open and it's not stuck to the mold. So Wayne's going to load ballast onto the volley. Isn't that satisfying? Take one, flag base test. Let's go. So what you can see, Adrian's done some on one side to build up some sort of pressure in the divider. Yes! So our first experiment port is done. 
We're going to break these open tomorrow and see how they come out. So Michael's going to get a load of material on and he's going to get back to the job as soon as possible. It's 2.43, he comes in the yard, he loads, he goes out and does another job. He doesn't go on the M4 and go at 30 miles an hour and drive slower and pull over and pretend he's got a puncture and do something else so he doesn't have to go and do the last job. He comes in, gets loaded as quick as possible and he's out the gate. That is what I'm talking about. Ari loves that stuff, like lorries being loaded and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm still on. Friday morning. Today we start on site at the YouTuber Car Guy's house. Walk straight in, glad to see the concrete blocks have turned up for all the internal walls. What you can see here is us going back to the old school. We've dug out for all our foundations on this back wall and our foundations have filled with water because of the slope of the ground and because of the river at the back here. We don't have a pump on site and we want to crack on, so we've gone back to the old school and we have a competition going here. Who can get rid of the most liters of water in the next five minutes? Now the digger is actually here to help with things like this. And we were clearing this area back with the digger, but the digger kept sinking because this ground isn't very solid. We actually dug this by hand. These holes you can see act like sort of a cantilever, like a counterweight to this. If we were to just build a wall here, which is reinforced, there's a chance the wall could move. Building this in front also and tying this into this with reinforcement bar and pouring in one solid concrete lump, the earth over the top of this will act as a counterlever holding this wall no matter what. So we've measured up and we know exactly where the piles are going. This one is marked clearly and it doesn't interfere with a block and beam. It can stay in place. However, this one means that we're gonna to have to take away the block and beam and we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna ask the structural engineer if we can move this pile slightly this way. At the top of the stairs, we have made the new entrance and you can see the other day where we were closing this up. What you can see here is us closing up an opening where there used to be a door. Now, when we started to take measurements of this area, if we put plasterboard on the wall, it would have been too thick and the door would have been too small. So we've rendered the block work. We're gonna put hard wall on here. Then we're gonna plaster it and paint it. That way we managed to get the wall that bit smaller and now we can fit a door here. It's never easy. Once we had the locations of the stud walls approved on Monday, we've started throwing up all the stud partitions. You can now see the sizes of the rooms and what it's gonna be like in here. So now I'm in the master bedroom. Now I'm in the ensuite. Master bedroom. Master bedroom. With these stud partitions in place, we can start our first fix very soon. That is what we're moving towards. So you're saying that the level above the bathroom isn't sitting on this wall at all? No. no. Wow. Did they do that on purpose? Why would they do that? Having a look at this wall, you would think that the joists above are supported on this wall. They are not. This wall is actually moving. Have a look. brutal. If we don't do this, what would happen is in between the um, tiles in the bathroom above, you see the grout start to come out and then you step on a tile and you can hear that sound like the tile slightly moving and somebody would be trying to correct that repeatedly and you'd think, oh my God, that guy's rubbish. That, those builders are cowboys. However, if they just did the bathroom and didn't do the rest of the house, how would they know that this was beneath? They wouldn't. So it's a good thing we've stripped everything back to the very start and we've done it all right. That's enough from here. I need to head back to the yard. We have a train coming in at 11 a.m. But on the way there, we have a problem with the eight ton digger. So I need to stop into Capital Plant in Enfield. I need to pick up a fuel filter because I hope it's that. Grab the filter, put that back onto the eight ton digger, hopefully get that started and then be ready for when the train gets in. See you soon. Outside Capital Plant, come to get a few bits. Uh, hopefully they've got everything ready for me. Gonna grab these bits and head back to the yard. Boy, do I look tired. The eyes are red and bloodshot, but what can we do but crack on? So we got the fuel filter earlier from Capital Plant and we put the fuel filter on and we hoped that would solve the problem. It did not, unfortunately. So we've had to do a bit of trial and error and we've worked out that two of the injectors in this are gone. So there's four injectors and two are gone. So we have to take off. I did the two fingers. I can't do that, can I? So we've got four injectors, but two of them have a problem. So we've taken out all the injectors. Now I'm gonna take the injectors to get refurbished. We're not going to buy new ones. We don't wanna waste money. We can get them refurbished and they'll be perfectly good. While we had the machine in this bay, we were having a look. There was a slight leak on the quick hitch. The quick hitch is basically what you use to take off the bucket and any attachments quickly and put another one on. So this is the quick hitch and this is the 
ram. If you have a look at that, you'll see that it's bent. I've had to think about how this has happened. And what's happened is sometimes the boys have taken the bucket off this and they've used it to hit stuff down. While that's not ideal, I think the first thing I've got to do is repair this and then somebody's going to get a telling off. So we're going to send this to Kevin, the man who repaired this ram a few weeks ago. And you'll see that in episode one if you click here. In the mix of everything that's going on, we've just had a delivery of cement. So we're running a bit low, but we have a big pour on today and a big pour on tomorrow. So thankfully it has turned up. He is loading now. But the reason I'm over here is to have a look at the flag base I made yesterday. Yep, it is box fresh. It looks like it's come out very well. There are a few little bits and pieces that we've got to touch up. But in order to move this, we're going to have to lift this with the forklift and that's when it will break away from this divider that was in the mold. Today, I cannot go in there and see what's happening, but I made sure that we were ready for it and everything is going well. Let's get down to CJ Diesels and drop these injectors off. Just had a bit of bad news. So I'm meant to have a 40 foot container arrive tomorrow, but I've just been told the container has been sold already and I don't have one coming. So I have about four hours to try to drop these off, come back, get ready for tomorrow and try and find a container from somewhere. Terry's actually a fisherman, yeah? Terry loves to go fishing, yeah? But that's what he does at work. He comes in and he's just like that. <laughs> so he leaves work, he's like that. And then he comes to work and he's like that the whole time trying to wind up me, Julia, Shana who Who bites the most? You. Now you're chatting rubbish. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Okay, let me see what I can do. Some of you have realized that our showcase did not come out on Wednesday or Thursday as I had planned. You know, in business, it's really important to set goals and targets and uh, we meet these a lot of the time. And when we don't, um, I, really take, I really take it hard. I'm hard on myself, I'm hard on my team, but it's just one of those things. We had a number of issues with drop boxes and files exporting, and we just couldn't bring you the video this week, um, which I'm very caught up about, but it is a great video. And next Wednesday, we will bring it to you. And hopefully this week that we didn't bring a video gives us a little buffer to ensure that we can keep bringing you two videos a week and sooner or later, hopefully bring you three. This is the sort of places I come to. This is where you get things done. They're for an eight ton, um, an eight ton caterpillar. No, 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 he didn't come to pick the injector up. No, yeah. <laughs> this is the cameraman. He thought you came to collect the injectors. You come to collect injectors? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're that YouTube geezer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm that YouTube geezer. Yeah, what's yeah. that then? You good? Yeah, yeah. You all right? I'm good, man. Are we making videos? No, no, we give you copper and we give you the top one as well. Yeah, because there's three on it. Can I have all three, please? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah? All right, thank you. No, we give me the injector. No, we no. What? Huh? I just gave you the injector. Oh, no, him. Okay. I, I am, thanks, mate. Yeah, I've got to give him this book back for a cat um, eight ton digger. I don't have any of the... Um, the Lincoln Yeah, there's a top one and there's two near the bottom. That that one has three. I can probably order the parts today so it'll be ready on Monday. Okay, any chance of yesterday? Maybe? Nah. No? All right, cool. Well, all Next right, well. <laughs> All right, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Good luck, yeah? Hey, bruv, you're in the video. When you're uploading this, yeah. <laughs> I'll watch you, I'll watch you. Make sure you subscribe as well. Yeah, yeah I'm ready, isn't it? Good man, good man, thank you. This is where you get everything to do with diesel. You can get it repaired, not buy a new one. You can get the old one refurbished. You can get it back on your vehicle or your plant or anything like that. Really good place. It doesn't look pretty at all. It's not the nicest place in the world, but these people really do the job and they know their stuff. You know why I wouldn't, why I don't want to like advertise where I go? Because now everyone will come here and now, and now I'm going to come here to get my things fixed and then I can't get any of my stuff fixed. Back in the yard, plenty to do. The train is still here. I've managed to collect the mail as well. So let's crack on. It's 9.49, I've just got home. On the way home, I had a warning come up for tire pressure on the car. Um, and then my steering started pulling to the left. So I pulled into a petrol station and I checked. I'm supposed to have tire pressure of 34 on the back and I had nine. So I've clearly got a puncture. Now at this time of night, there's not really much ways I can fix it. I stopped in the petrol station. I put air into the tire and I've called the tire fit and I've asked him to meet me at my house at 5.45 to fix the puncture. I've got to be back down here in a few hours. Let's hope he gets here so I can get to the yard nice and early. 6.01 and we're gonna try and fix it. Tire guys have not let me down. That is the guilty party. Hopefully we can sort this out and I can get to work ASAP. Uh, we can't use the compressor or the gun because we don't wanna wake up 
any of the residents and have them hate me any more than they already do. Unfortunately, we can't fix the tire because um, there's damage in the sidewall. So we have to take it off and put the spare wheel on, which is really annoying at this time of the morning. The tire firm are gonna take the wheel with them, and put a new tire on it for me and then bring it back to me when they're done. Saturday morning, I managed to get into the yard. Everything is moving. We've had a little shuffle round in the other yard over there and the scaffolders are here. They're ready to crack on. We're gonna focus internally. We're gonna go through a few bits and we're gonna decide the best way to start building it up. The boys from Asheville Construction are also here. We are starting to put the electrics in. We're putting in lighting and we're gonna give me a couple of double sockets outside in case I have any equipment which I need to plug in. I still want it to be a safe working environment. So I've taken one of these, the one that was previously there, and we've cut it. Let's put it in here, Damien. Yes. We're gonna put it here. We're gonna weld it and bolt it back in place. And this will be the entrance to the gym. This is my makeshift plan to start. I'm gonna start doing this side of the gym first. So that's my squat area. I'm gonna walk up to it, yep. take it off. Yep. I'm gonna step back here. Wow. So I've got plenty of room there. Go down Both. there. And then I need to be able to rack it yep. back on. This one, I'm gonna do my dips. You're gonna do the dip rack here, yeah? my sit-up elevation. I remember the picture I sent you of the sit-up thing. Yeah, yeah. I want to be able to do sit-ups elevated at different heights, yeah. yeah? There'll be a bar in the corner here and this is my standing fly area. So this is how I'm going to start. Are you filming, Will? Yeah. My boys are here yeah. doing the electrics here as well. So within about two hours, you'll have more light in here. I've realized that I've ordered a double switch for outside instead of a single, but that is not a problem. We we'll think of another cool way to light this place up. Can we get some LED lighting in there? Some different colors and stuff? Yeah, cool, that's what we're gonna do. We are using these LED floodlights. We're gonna have four. We're gonna put these up there on the scaffold and these will completely light the area up. We are waiting for the 40 foot container which is gonna be here very soon. When the driver operator gets here, he's gonna have a bit of a surprise because he doesn't know that he's gotta move this one back for us. So if we have a look around the back here, the back of the container is black. So we've given this the first bit of TLC. So this is done. Now we can move this one into place and the back should not rust because it's been painted and it's been looked after. The side here has been prepared. Yes, it has. We can paint that afterwards, but that is not important at the moment. But it didn't make sense for us to paint this yet because when we put the 40 foot on top and we start to jet wash that and sand it down, everything from the 40 foot would then fall on this and then we'd be doing the work twice. So we've done it in the right way. So we're doing a bit of stock management in the yard. So we had the material dumped over that side, but what Wayne's doing is he's taking all the material, he's created a ramp and he's driving into the material bay and he's dumping it at the back. Look at it go. Now that is what this machine was built for. Spot on. Our container has arrived. It's a tight one and the man has come with a monster of a lorry. Yes and the container is looking good. So you want it down there, yeah? Yeah, parked over there, so I can drive up there and reverse in here. Okay, fine. Yeah, so we're gonna put that machine around there, okay. Yep, you're good. Hey, there goes my wood. He can drive. I will. This man is serious. So Michael did a fantastic job of getting in here and it's actually Michael O'Donnell himself. He's coming his R580, which is a powerful machine and he's got a 45 ton crane on it. And we get lifting. It's not very watertight, is it? There's water coming out of it. Keep going back. <clears throat> Bit more. Okay, I think that's about it, isn't it? If he goes down. Yeah. Boom, looking good. Who's got a tape measure? <laughs> I'm being serious, who's got a tape measure? No one got a tape measure. I'm going to go and get a tape measure. I'm going to get a tape measure. And we have slightly more. We have got it in and we have four points of contact. We just have to do a little bit more shifting around. I want to thank everyone who helped and I want to thank Michael for his patience as well because we weren't spot on the first time. But we did get there in the end and I love it. Look at it. Sooner or later, this will be jet washed down, sanded and black like it should look. Zip, zip, zip. Change your tire. It's nice. It's all right. Stairs there. <whistles> Michael O'Donnell is done and out of here. As soon as he's gone, we're gonna start having a look at what's to do next. Mm -hmm. Now this is the first time 
that my desk has been used for such a thing. Baby Cora has come to visit us on a Saturday and I'm speaking very quietly because I don't want to wake her up. Let's see if we can get some Asheville gear in there. Asheville the, yes, let's put there. <laughs> Cora's gonna be part of the Asheville team eventually, so let's put like a little a little train in there as well. It's like a game of buckaroo. See <laughs> how much we can get on the baby before she wakes up. Just to make sure she stays asleep. She didn't sleep well last night. She had her jabs yesterday. So uh -uh. we didn't have a great night last night. Uh, he so. was awake several times in the night yesterday. Which would explain why Terry didn't come to work today. <laughs> Terry's got a ute, man. Only now they actually see the kids. Like it's a uh, boy. Well done, Tezza. Thank you. <laughs> Let me check my heights. Let me check my heights. <laughs> Okay, so this will be for our incline setup. So we'll have a bench and we can hook the bench on here at different heights. I've got the dimensions of the, yeah. the dips here. So let's put the dips right here. How, how is this? Is this? Yes, yeah, all right. It is a wide bar. Yeah. It is wide. All right, so what? Everyone will have to adjust, innit? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Mate, I need a leg extension. Yeah, like, I've got an idea for that. True say man's got quads. Yeah. I need leg extension. Yeah. Well, um, I'm getting a close up on my quads, aren't I? <laughs> no, no definition. <laughs> 650 wide, 14 higher. Boom. Good man. We are cracking on. What a Saturday. Thanks for watching Asheville Weekly episode 007. We finally have the new containers in place for the tyre area. We're going to push on with the refurbishments next week. Finally, after five long years, my sign is clean of graffiti. I'm in hot pursuit of a black taxi. I'm still really disappointed that we didn't get... Oh, no! No! Now, I'm still really disappointed we didn't bring you the midweek video, but you will have it this coming Wednesday. Now, this was a busy week, but next week, we're going to step it up with five trains. That's seven and a half thousand tons of material. Rolling. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to the Asheville channel. Click here for transportation of our LH60. And click here for last week's video. I think I make a decent James Bond, you know?